think, you know, this is what I would imagine it to be. But I also find it kind of hard to reconcile. Sort of trying to keep it stripped of politics. Because I don't think you really can. I mean, as much as you can be aware in the West of what goes on there, because it's so isolated. I, I don't know, I find it sort of troubling in a way mm. to try to strip it from that when, yes, dreams are universal, but we also sort of know very, like, the little that we know about what it's like to live there as a worker or as a working person is, is quite startling and maybe terrifying for people living in the West. So, like, how do you sort of reconcile the disparity between what we seem to know about what it's like to really live there and what's on the screen? If that, I'm not sure if I'm posing my question in the right way. Yeah, no. Something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, I've made with Dan Gordon here woo, three documentaries uh, that they're actually quite hard hitting. One was uh, that this looks seem rather hard. This one was on football, uh, and one was on mass games, and one was on Americans. They just happened to be rather sort of uh, the subject matter within them covered. Uh, human rights with the, the football team who was supposedly taken off one of them to the other prison camp. Second one was with the first time we actually asked about the arduous march, the starvation period. And the third film was about Japanese abductees. So first of all, we come from a pretty well balanced, pretty well grounded, and plus I go in every, you know, I've been there for 20 years, I have three genuine North Korean friends. So I didn't take this lightly. Um, Anya will give you her reason why she joined in with us, but I certainly needed a filmmaker to make this film. So for me, uh, it, I didn't make this film actually for you, now, and it will differ from this. I made this film for a North Korean audience that I hoped would be accessible for you because I think you've got two, oh, it's going to be difficult with this microphone, you've got, you know this side, you've got your human rights abuse, you've got the military this and what have you, uh, and here you've got the, sort of the military. Now, you can either put those two very closely and say that is North Korea, that's the North Korea that I know and have seen on television, or you can perhaps widen your perimeter and think there actually is, is in that mid-zone, there is something else going on. Now, that's what I wanted to make this film for. I have friends there who I've spoken to, and they wanted just... Uh, about other things going on in North Korea, whether it's human rights abuse, whether it's uh, food situation, what have you. It wasn't intended to do that. And I think Anya will, you know, will support me in saying this is purely a fictional film. It's one that they've never had before. I don't know what value it will have, but I'm pretty sure it does have a value. And having, knowing, again, affirmation that it's being shown in South Korea just makes me feel that much better. It's something that I can't answer you now. But I've been in North Korea a long time. I've known the impact that we've had. We taking the football team back that then I didn't. In uh, uh, we took the football team back in two. He hates my mean dates. Two thousand and one or two. Two thousand two was the biggest cultural exchange North Korea has ever done with North Korea. Now I think that was a good thing. Taking Bend It Like Beckham, which we did to the North Korean Pyongyang Film Festival, seen by 16,000 people, was I think a good thing. It then, 2010, it was the first film to be shown nationwide throughout North Korea, the first Western film. It, North Korea is, has a, an isolationist policy. And you can either decide to isolate that, which we've done very well since 1945, or you can decide that that's perhaps not good and, and that in fact engagement on all levels, on human rights levels right down to making a ready film on it, is important. So, so it's a difficult one and I, I think you're right to judge us, um, but that's, that's from my heart uh, to you and, and yeah, I'm, you know, we knew this when we were entering into it. I'm not sure about uh, how much um, you, you, you sort of talk, you got involved uh, without understanding quite you know, this, this process. As I always told you, I did it for your beautiful eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I thought about stumbled into things, and I, I thought about it. But um, in in my heart, for about the last 20 years, I'm I'm just a filmmaker. And when I met Nick, and we had a plan, even it was with a bottle of whiskey in those six years, I also like, what what am I doing? Is it okay what I'm doing? And making an entertainment movie is anywhere in the world, it's okay. Um, I'm not a documentary maker, I only thing what I want to do is let people love 
make a smile anywhere in the world, cross boundaries, that's it. I hope it is relevant to your question. We have time for one more question. Okay, this is the I've just got a quick question. Um, from the quality of some of the scenes, it actually looks slightly different. I was wondering if you used found footage. Can you repeat it again? It was too fast. I mean, <laughs> um, like some scenes, for example, when you're off the factories or off the city streets, the quality, I guess, of that the film is during those scenes were slightly different, and I was wondering if you used found footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we used for that, uh, yeah, the found footage. Yeah that we tried to match, that it doesn't look too much different. But we didn't we didn't have those images during the editing. And that's also the reason why we end up with the animation while we're working in the editing. Suddenly, we saw that the story was missing and that there were like holes in the, in the story to make it fluently. So we had to find a solution. And one of the solutions that we tried to find was make the animation so go with the with the uh, emotions of our main character, and we based on uh, on, on North Korean liner cuts, and we animated them. Okay, now we have to clear the house, but uh, thank you so much.